States Exhibit 34K. Mm hmm You recognize who that is? Yeah, that's Phil. The rapper with the number one album in the country is expected to testify in a murder trial in Hamilton County later this week. T.I. is expected to appear as a witness in the murder trial of Hosea Thomas. Thomas is accused of killing Philant Johnson, the personal assistant for T.I. in 06. Local 12's Joe Webb was inside the courtroom for opening statements. Joe joins us live from the courthouse with new information in this developing story alert. Joe? Well, Rob, testimony began this afternoon in that murder trial that's expected to draw crowds and extra security here at the Hamilton County Courthouse. T.I., one of the hottest rap artists in, a, in America today, is expected to testify later this week, maybe as early as tomorrow. Now, it was his personal assistant, Philant Johnson, who police say was gunned down while riding with T.I. and his entourage as they left a Roselawn club in May of 2006. Okay, so one thing we can gather from T.I.'s own words, I heard him say it in his song, because I followed the situation closely back in the day, is that he felt like he needed to have all those guns that he was caught with. Everybody is, the problem comes in, is like, how the hell did he get caught with all these guns and only get 11 months? So people are speculating that T.I. snitched. So we're going to watch this news clip of him getting caught with the guns, then we're going to hear T.I. Um, address it directly. Enjoy and share this video. Family. Clifford Harris has now admitted that he is guilty of the serious federal firearms charges with which he was charged. The next step is to determine an appropriate sentence. He has asked, and we in the court have agreed, that his sentencing be deferred for a year to allow him to perform a unique and extensive program, at least 1,000 hours, of community service. That service will focus on using his high public visibility and his talents and life experience to tell at-risk young people about the mistakes he has made and to educate them about the dangers of violence, guns, gangs, and drugs. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for blessing me with the second chance at life and success. Uh, with the utmost respect and sincerity, uh, I'm grateful that the court and the government has given me a chance as a part of my sentence to help kids live safe, be productive, and avoid making the same mistakes I have made. I realize completely that I violated the law and I accept that I must be punished. I take it very seriously. Uh, the most important thing to me is that I can turn this negative time in my life right now into a positive. Uh, while I'm not looking forward to being incarcerated, I am looking forward to putting this whole ordeal behind me. I realize I have a very long road of redemption to travel and I intend to do just that. I am dedicated and committed to making a difference in the lives of our young people today. Okay, so you saw the guy there, the police officer, the Fed said that. He asked us and we gave him something. So you mean to tell me you was facing 30 something years, and I'm not saying it either way, that you're facing 30 something years, right? And you go in and you just ask him and they just give it to you? So this is what people were saying, but look, I'm not gonna rush to judgment. I'm gonna let y'all be the judge. Tell me what y'all think about the situation. I, I love T.I. at the end of the day. But T.I. actually addresses this himself. I want y'all to listen to it in its entirety and let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Subscribe for more exclusives like this. Hit that like button for me. Peace. You know what it is, the People's Choice DJ Envy, and I got a special guest hanging out with me today, the homie T.I. What's up? What's up, champ? How's everything with you, homie? Cool. Well, first of all, welcome home. Thank you. We, we, we definitely missed you. We missed the music. Man, I missed y'all too. <laughs> We definitely miss the uh, we miss the, the way that you are. Like we always feel to pause when whenever it's an award show, a video. Like we miss that that arrogant swag that that we love, man. I appreciate that. Now, now when you were locked down, you actually um, when you came back out, you uh, came to one of my clubs, and okay. um, you grabbed the mic and you, and you told people that I got a lot of letters from Harlem, you got a lot of letters from Queens and Brooklyn. Like, yeah. did you get a lot of love from New York City? I did. I got a lot of love from New York, Jersey, Connecticut, mm -hmm. Philly. I got a lot of love from everybody. Uh, you know, I mean, it was, I got stacks and stacks. I got like 50, about 50 boxes. Right. Now, were you able to write some of those people back or? Man, you know what I'm going to do, man? I'm just going to, I'm going I'm, I'm to take all the letters mm -hmm. and, and re, and, and take the addresses and put them on different envelopes. Mm -hmm. And write one letter to everybody <laughs> and sign okay. it myself. Right, right, right. But it's gonna take me about a year to get there. It was man, it's like I had got to be like twenty, thirty thousand letters. Right. 
Yeah, I got like maybe 50 letters a day for eight months. Wow. Now, what was now? How was it being locked up in prison? I mean, were you in general population? How was yeah. it with you with the other inmates? With, with yeah, I was with in the general officers? population. Like, how was it? I mean, man, I, I I went in there with the mindset of man, you know, I'm just going in here to do mine like everybody else here to do theirs. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect no special treatment. I didn't. I didn't have no chips on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I was received well, you know what I'm saying? I respect their, I respected everybody and everybody respected me. Right. I ain't never had no problems, you know, I mean, you had officers that wanted to be assholes for certain, at certain times for certain reasons. Right, right, right. But, you know, I ain't had no, 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 uh, no problem with no other inmate. Right, right. Now, when you got out, what was the, the first thing that you, that you did when you got out? Mm. Mm. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I guess we felt sorry for Tiny that day. <laughs> nah, don't do that. <laughs> you know what, I'm hey, uh, what was the first thing that you did? I mean, yeah, you know, we feel sorry for every day. Did you know? <laughs> nah, I mean, I, man, I, 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 you know, I did what a man does. Okay. All right, all right. Well, what's the What's the first thing you bought when you got out? Bought. You my. I know you're a car guy, I know you're a jewelry guy, I know you're a clothes guy. Significant value. I didn't really buy no jewelry, did I? Or did I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I had some jewelry waiting on me, but I, I think the first thing I bought, I think the first thing I bought was, was a car for Tamika. Okay. What kind of car was that? A Panamera. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Four door Porsche. Then you bought yourself a Ferrari. Well, actually, I bought the Maybach first. Okay, the Maybach first. All right, I'm going, I'm out of order. And then, then was it the Ferrari? Then it was the jury, then it was the Ferrari, yeah. Okay. Now, now you did a, we're talking to T.I., you did an interview with Larry King. Yeah. And uh, Larry King named off the guns that you had. Mm-hmm. You had a lot of artillery. I did. You had a lot of <laughs> artillery. Now, now when, when you hear when you hear him naming off those weapons, was, was there anything like, he was like, damn, I had that much? Nah, I was well aware. Yeah? I was well aware. <laughs> He's like, I was well aware. Now, he also asked a question that was kind of left field. Which was when he said something about did you did you ever hit your wife or it hit oh, your girl? Man. Where did that come from? I know he. I think he was talking about Chris Brown at one time. I think he was talking about Chris Brown during that period. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, asked me if I knew Chris. We were talking about my movie. Mm -hmm. I said, mentioned Chris was in the movie. He asked me if I knew Chris. He asked me what I thought about the situation. He asked me if I was violent. You know, it went from there. Yeah. You think that a little disrespectful? Man, I mean, I think he wanted to see. If you was gonna get upset and get angry yeah, with him, yeah, absolutely. When this when this incident happened, uh huh, and you were arrested, you know, the first thing that people they counted you out, sure, and they thought that you know you were gone. People were talking, and yeah. it was it was definitely a, a crazy incident. And then when it came to the realization that you weren't gonna get life in prison, right, those people changed stories. Sure. Now, how do you deal with the industry and deal with some of those people that you know at one time you know thought it was over and, and turned? I mean, I don't. I mean, I. They, 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 they don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be per perfectly honest, I, I, I have no feelings about it. Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't affect me one way or the next. Right. Uh, I really don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're not important enough to me for me to care. Right. So I just keep it moving. I do my thing. As long as the people who, you know, as long as the people who on my side in my corner stay in my corner. And I'm cool. I'm straight. Right. Everybody else, man, you know, you know, they jump off a bridge tomorrow. I won't lose no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, when when it came out that you were getting a year in prison and community service and, and a lot of other stuff, the first thing people said was Ti snitching. He snitching. is gonna come out that he snitched on somebody. And, sure. And, when? You know, when is gonna come out? You know, and you know, uh, Beanie Siegel said it at one time, and, sure. and Fifty said it at one time. And sure. Now, did you snitch on somebody? Nah. Want nobody for me to snitch on? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it was it was it was me. Who who am I gonna tell? Them? I mean, I I can see if you if you saying I had I had weight, I had birds, and, and my suppliers of another <laughs> per Okay, well you know then that that then I could even understand that suspicion. But all I mean all all my shit came from the manufacturer. Right. So who am I snitching <laughs> on? Glock? <laughs> you know, I'm snitching on ooh, Smith or Wesson? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't even understand the 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 context in which that thought arises. Right. Um. 
I mean, and, and there's a such thing as a judgment and commitment. Right. There's a such thing as a plea agreement. Mm -hmm. There's a such thing as a docket sheet. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is Google me. Pull up all my information and read for yourself. Mm -hmm. If that was in my plea agreement, it would be in my plea agreement because people took heat in the government for even coming up with this deal. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and believe me, they would not have had to have taken that heat if they could say, oh, we gave him this in exchange for that. Right. They have no reason to protect me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, then who is it? Who is this person? Who went to jail? Right. Who was it? Um... And whoever it was, when they got to jail, wouldn't they say, hey, y'all, <laughs> tip put me here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, you know, just being around guys in prison, when I went and did my time being around guys in prison, they main thing was, man, since we done been through it, we been through the system, and we know how it is, so we already know you ain't you ain't tell. We already mm -hmm. know because, you know, I got told on, and I know how it is. I know what it takes to, you know what I'm saying, right. to do your thing. But what they said is what I'm what I'm more concerned about is the cats who talking about you telling and sitting around probably sitting around the same nigga who told on me, right? You know and know they told on me, right, right. So they pointing the finger at you for what they assuming or, or speculating that you did when they standing next to niggas who doing they thing and smoking weed with them and, and, and going to the club with them and. Just because he got a night car, he gonna come pick you up. You ain't got no ride yourself, so you gonna go ride with a snitch to the club. You know he snitching. But man, he just got that new Benz, man. You know what I'm saying? Them hoes be hollering. <laughs> you know, right, that's absolutely. the that's the that's the main thing. You know, if you gonna put a suit on me, just make sure it fit. Absolutely. Now, knowing Tip, we're talking to Ti. Now, you're not one of those artists that likes to hold his tongue. If somebody say something, you're gonna address it. It is gonna be a problem. So on this album, time. I'm sure time. I'm sure it will be addressed on this album. Am I, am I right? I mean, to be honest with you, champ, it ain't even worth it. Why? What for? What? Why I'm worried about things that are said that are true. Right. You know, you saying something about me, man, that's a lie. I ain't even, I mean, I'm not, I'm not interested, even the least bit. Right. It don't mean nothing to me. I got too much, I got too many other things going on. If I ain't had nothing else going on, mm -hmm. if I was trying to get hot, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? If I need a little controversy to sell some records, then maybe I would. Mm -hmm. But I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm doing damn good. Right, well, with or here. without the record, with or without the music, with or without the case. Now I'm still. I've always. I've been. I've been doing good since I started doing good. Right. Okay. And I ain't. I ain't even again. Nobody. No help.